Ch Cheezer. But guess what? Eric's playing against his image. There's four bobs who are speed building that. I know you can't see them. They're all on the top. They are glowing blue. I can see it. There we go. On that angle, you can see it as it finishes. So he's actually only gone for a one ranks pressure. This is the most conservative opening we've ever, ever seen Eric do. And it's specifically playing against his image. It is a cheesy bastard. Um, an absolutely cheesy bastard. So well done. So now we're basically seeing him trying to, uh, a theory here, trying to move down to the right to take the vision camp. Ah, now vision camp's not a high value camp, but he's doing that so that he can get a bit of vision and then maybe safely take the speed camp behind it. He's going to eat some flowers here. I remember guys eating flowers, killing chickens. I still, I don't know why I love that YouTube comment so much. I keep referencing it. Whoever you got, got our guy out there. You had the, ref the, the comment. I am going to quote you probably for the next six months. He's like, eating flowers, fighting chickens. This game, this game is stupid. <laughs> and I'm like, don't get me wrong. Some of the placeholder art and creeps are very silly right now. But I just, I don't know. There was something about that comment that just absolutely tickled me. The shrine here on the natural as well. Because like, it, it's kind of true, but also like, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I didn't even want to analyze it. I just think it's funny. The, the deers that shoot rockets out of their heads, possibly the funniest. As we see, this is a deer shooting a rocket out of its head. It's very close to these units, so you can't really see the rocket very easily. But uh, nice micro to get that healing camp for Eric. Now, lances are very powerful once they get the upgrade. These guys don't have the upgrade. Oh, the dog goes down. Okay, healing camp will go up. Needs to move on the green egg there in order to pick up the circle of healing. Activate it. And here we go. Looks like we're taking the other speed camp as well. So this is really good for theory in terms of the creeping. And actually is split creeping. Oh my god. I remember the first time I saw someone split creeping in Warcraft 3 in 2003. And I was like, you can do two things at once? No. My mind was blown as a 13 year old. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. The thought of doing that level of multitasking, which is so funny in hindsight because Warcraft's very slow. If you're not doing things in two places at once, it's like, really? Come on. <laughs> it's, Doombringer's out now for theory. It's four and a half minutes, so it's not the super fast one. But that plus the Shroudstone on the high ground and these guys getting inside. Now, the upgrade hasn't finished yet. This seems like a crazy move for Eric to commit here. Eric? Are you, Eric? Oh, no. Eric's getting their units hit. Does not have the upgrade yet. I mean, only loses one Lancer because they're tanky as all. Heck, don't get me wrong. Lancers are a very tanky unit. They don't do that much damage output, though. And Brutes, if they can land hits on them, they will chomp through them very quickly. But notice Lancers with their two range can actually hit without getting hit a lot of the time. As I say that, they took two Brute hits, of course. And uh, these guys are going to move to that right side. Ooh, okay. Behind this, we've got Lancers up. We've got another Habitat. No Biokinetic Slab just yet. What the heck? Very slow Therium transition. And he's going Hangar Bay now. Oh, this is going to be so annoying. So the drop isn't going to kill much, but it's going to keep him pinned on the defense. A very slow expand. Also, a bunch of bobs aren't mining, guys. These two bobs aren't mining. There's one on the top that's not mining as well. Oh, no. I don't know how these bobs aren't mining, but a big misclick there costing Eric big time. So Eric's economy way lower than it could be right now. He's also transitioned up very, very slowly. Uh, can we call them Serral Camps, not Speed Camps? I've already been calling them Serral Camps. Not everyone knows who Serral is, sadly. They got mad at me for saying that. They're like, no, he's not the goat. We call them Messy Camps. Some people call them Messy Camps on the side of the maps as well. What can I say, guys? Depends on what, what who the goat is, depending on, on which uh, sports background you come from, right? Sports or gaming. Shrine on the third base. I think Theory's doing a good job of getting into a macro game. He's not overcommitting to the, the Doombringer drop just yet. Just kind of goes home, lets it regenerate up and, and heal for now. Building an extra Shroudstone up here as well. And he's going to take down his trees on the left so he can take that fourth base. Now, there is a third base going up for Eric. Has he still not got an upgrade? My god, he's finally building the Biokinetic Slab now. But of course, he's focusing on Hornets to defend those annoying Doombringer Fiend uh, Gaunt Drops. And here we go. He's going to go after the Imps. Shift-clicking the Imps is one of the best things you can do, I feel, with the Hornet. They are pretty fragile. They die pretty fast. He's not willing to pop his shield just yet, though. He's going to scout around this base a little bit more. And actually just going to go into the Therium patch. Great way to harass. Really nice play. Accidentally drifts in range of the Shroud Stone. And he takes out that Imp and then pulls away. Good micro here by Eric. I really love that Eric's actually playing uh, Vanguard. I thought he'd be more of an Infernal player since he is Zerg in StarCraft, but seems to suit him quite well. Oh, Lancers coming in. Now he pops the shield. Lancers. Oh my god, they don't have the upgrade, but they're still pretty good against the Gaunts if they can get on top. But with three Shroudstones going up, 
He's like, nah, let's get out of here. Loses one Lancer. Will a second one go down? That Fiend trying to take him out. He turns around and takes out the Fiend. Nicely done. Bit of veterancy as well. We'll go back to no doubt heal in the near future. And uh, having the upgrade going for those Lancers is going to be great. Extra barracks coming in. It's going to be that very standard bio composition. Just with a few Hornets mixed in to disincentivize the Doombringer drop. I, I think he might literally not even build any more Hornets. Just go like two or three and then just leave it at that. Like he's got three out right now. That one's just gone home to heal. And that's going to be pretty darn nice. Um, did he... He didn't realize he forgot the upgrade? No, I think he purposefully didn't go the upgrade, guys. He just, he just is playing a different style where he's saying, you know what, I would rather get the Hornets to defend the Doombringer drops and then I'll focus on the upgrade later. But oh, it's the flame, Flaming Imp timing. It's the parting style, very, very fast Flaming Imp timing. He's already got eight Imps on the front, a ton of Gaunts, only a couple Brutes in the front line. So the trick here is you need to spread your units or run away very quickly once those Imps flame on. Easier said than done. Sentry posts being speed built here, not using his overcharge just yet. Lancers just need to spread out like crazy. I think Lancers can spread out really well. This 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 imp timing is a minute late. Shaking my head, says Beomorph. I mean, we got to give forgiveness for the opening. This was a very aggressive Lancer pressure opening. This is not a, a, a clean, easy, fast expand. I mean, these guys have been slowed down a little bit, but man, when is he going to activate the imps? The Lancer spread is really good. I actually feel like... Oh, no, no. Ow, big explosions. Big explosions. Ow. Spread. Oh my god. The Lancer turrets are good. How many? There's still like a few imps left. If he could take out the repairing bobs, that would be nice. Oh, this fight's so messy. The Lancers are so weak. Nice bobs blowing up. There is a flat cannon in the back doing damage. The bobs are not bad fighting units, but I think we're at that point where it spirals out of control with the Gaunts getting enough fiend spawns. Maybe? Maybe not? Oh, he gets another infest down on everything. Oh, oh my god. Units are dying. There's not that many Gaunts left, but the Fiend spawns are getting problematic. The Exos are here. This fight's very close, but I think with the Hornets, if we can get on top of that Gaunt line, you can take him out. Oh, good return to Hangar. Nice micro. Guys, Eric's microing really well. Eric's microing very well to hang on. That was actually really impressive. Eric's such a small scale fighting master. I'm not surprised that this game suits him really well. Oh, oh. Yeah, this is an overcommitment. Theory went too hard. Theory needs to run home right now. He needs to run away, but look at that. He tries to dive on the Hornet. Throws away three more Gaunts and a Brute. You might have four bases up against three, but you just lost a very, very important fight because now there's Exos out. Uh, we should see even just one or two Medtechs to get energy right now would be huge. And um, there wasn't enough hold position repair on the SCVs, says Nina. Wait, wait, wait. You can hold position and repair at the same time? Wait, does that change something? I think... <laughs> oh! Not worth, not worth. You can't be using imps on their own. Imps are a support unit to take out a critical mass. But I actually love the way his force is diversified. Dude, Eric's... Eric maybe doesn't have this in the bag, but is definitely in a great position. Speed builds fourth base. The only thing I worry about is Eric's economy management is not very good in StarCraft. So I just want to check his bases. 9 out of 12 in the main, 16 out of 12 on the third... 6 out of 12 there. Oh, oh, we just saw a Doombringer again. More imps. These imps are not trading well, though. Theory needs to stop fighting on the map. Theory needs to just turtle right now. I don't know why Theory keeps going out to fight Eric. Eric clearly has extra units that are stronger right now. A couple of uh, rank 2 exos here that Twitch chat's pointing out. This is going to be interesting. More barracks coming in. A couple sentry posts going up. Just got to fix up that saturation. And these guys should be shift clicked out to the left. They're gonna build. Oh, they're gonna go for that Ethereum. Okay, that's a that's a decent idea. Just go for the Ethereum with those extra workers. But uh, the natural expand getting fixed up on the Bob saturation. You can see this base will be getting more Bobs once those uh, habitat and sentry post are finished building. And it's still a very basic bitch army. I, I don't think getting the um, the upgrade for the Gaunts is really that important. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. I really feel like their speed boost upgrade is one of the lowest priority upgrades you can get in the game. Doesn't give you any actual combat boost. It just gives you the ability to avoid Lancers jumping on top of you, which is important. But I think right now you're going to need a few Magmadons to help fight back the Lancers. Oh, Shrine does get taken down. And I really feel like we need something to actually clear the Lancers. We're going to go straight Hellborn, which Hellborn is the better unit than Ma Magmadon in the long run. But in small scale fights, a single Hellborn does not do very much. Oh, okay. Hits a Lancer, does take it down. Hornets are going after the Hellborn, but there's no way they're going to take that out. 
And it looks like those imps, one of them does flame on as well. Oh, good, good first flaming imp hit. But those lancers just run away. Run, 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 Eric. You are outnumbered right now. What are you doing on this side of the map with just a few units? Eric just spent all of their money on economy. He should not have been this far on the enemy side of the map without with so small army. Huge mistake. Loses his med techs. Loses a few exos as well. Big mistake. Big, 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 big mistake. So this is a, an argument I've been having with the internet um, basically throughout all of my casts where everyone says Magmadons are bad and you don't want to mass Magmadons. Like, but basically, Magmadon is a specialist unit with some of the most power of any unit in any RTS. But right now, it's kind of like watching people try to use Burrowed Infestors anytime before the last two years where it, it's just like people just do not use Magmadons correctly. Magmadons are amazing to drop in bob lines, but combat drops are also amazing. If you flank them either with ground Magmadons, even just one Magmadon forces their whole army to reposition. It's like a disruptor shot in StarCraft. That being said, we'll focus on this game. And the other thing is if you drop them onto their army from behind, they are god tier. They do so much damage, but they're not a core army unit. We've seen too many people make 14 Magmadons and then just get them kited down one at a time by the Exo started stepping back. And that's been a really big issue. Now, this game's been a bit back and forth. The big reason we see so many long games at the moment is a lot of players um, overcommit to aggression when they're ahead. And uh, and they're not sure, uh, you know, or, or, or sorry, when their army's less, but their economy's ahead and they should defend. So people are attacking when they should defend and then defending when they should attack. It's just because no one has good game sense in this game yet. Oh, nice shield. Eric. Eric is destroying right now. Dude, Eric is all over it. This is sick. Ooh. Oh my god. Okay, there's Hornets. Gonna try and pull to the right side. Ooh. Yeah, really good point from Beomorph. You can't drop Magmadons in the center of an army. If it was like StarCraft, you could drop the Magmadon in the middle of the army. It would just squish in between the other units and destroy. But the way collision size and unit kind of obstruction works in Stormgate... If you drop in the middle of the army, the Magmadon does pop on the outside. So you can't really... It's not like doing a Baneling drop in StarCraft or something like that where you drop right in the middle and it gets that premium hit. It does drop on the edge of the ball. It's still effective, but it's not as brutal as you'd like it to be. Um, definitely something to keep in mind if you guys want to try that. I love that we see Atlas drops already coming in, though. That's very nice to deal with all these small units. Um, this is such a weak army to Atlas Splash. But you've got Hellborn coming in. Good numbers of Hellborn. I think this is going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. Because I've heard people say late game uh, Vanguard is just so much better. Especially with their veterancy. I've also heard people say that actually Hellborn are, are goaded. And if the player has enough Hellborn, they wreck. Well, this army for Eric is just tiny. This army is just so small. And he loses so many valuable units again. All of his Exos have gone down. Eric, he's been caught on the map three times now with a small army. Doesn't System Shock to get out of there, and I think it's costing him big time. He does have an army on the left as well. He's got a lot of med techs, but he needs to get that XO count up. And uh, I know he's kind of diversifying his tech right now, but it feels like Theory is truly a macro infernal player, right? He is just always trying to get like masses of bases, do everything at once. Theories and I will overwhelm you with numbers. He's even got Weavers coming in now as well. But watch out for the Atlas shots. Good pullback on some of those Gaunts to avoid the burning ground. The Atlases getting some more shots off. Good micro by Eric. He's got two Atlases and a small section of units. He's got a counterattack on the left side of the map. They're going to try to come in and do damage. They're going to do some fantastic uh, counter damage, but he has to survive at home. Where are his Atlases? It looks like he did lose one Atlas to a Weaver drop. One of the Evacs gets taken down. The, the, the Atlases are shooting spiders. Oh my God. Atlases, known as the lowest IQ unit now in all of Stormgate. You, you got, oh my god, that shot was massive though. He kills like seven gaunts. That was kind of hilarious. Army on the left is going to take down the shrine. Imps do flame on, take out a few of these uh, exos, but you know what? Defending the right side base, taking out a counter base is pretty good. The problem that we're seeing from Eric is that I think if, if he can defend this right side, I think he bounces right back because Theory just has more stuff. And there we go. Watch out for those Hellborn shots. You got to get out of there. The healing is very effective, but there is a point where like five Hellborn sh shots hit in the middle of the Exos and they all disappear. You have to get out of here. You got to get out of here, bro. You can't be fighting these Hellborn like this. Trying to pick off the Weaver, which is an admirable idea. But oh, those Hellborn hits are starting to land. The Weaver goes down. You got to get out of here, Eric. Oh no, Eric's over committing. I mean, he's in a bad spot. He doesn't really have the numbers of theory by any means, but oh, the Gaunt's chasing. 
This is what people were saying. I think Nina was saying the speed upgrade's really important because the moment the Lancers are gone, you want to run forward and basically kill the Exos really quickly so they can't run away. And that's exactly what Nina was talking about in the chat there. Nina, of course, a very high-level StarCraft player who's been playing a fair bit of Stormgate and getting to a high level there as well. Looks like this might be the breaking moment, but you can't lose your Hellborn. You cannot lose your Hellborn. They are very slow. You've got to protect those. And only one Hellborn goes down perfectly fine. Flay Dragon arrives. Eric just cannot keep up with the overwhelming macro of Theory. Theory macro beats micro apparently today in game one. Infernal looking like they've got game one in the bag. It was a bit of a barn burner. I do think the big mistake for Eric was there was twice in this game... He moved to the enemy side of the map with a very small section of units. He was trying to do that thing where the little dog barks at the big dog. But in this case, the big dog actually just bit him on the nose. And I think if Eric didn't hand those units away at those times, he actually could have had a really good game. But uh, GG, really nice play there. Nice overwhelming macro and uh, nice play dragon to finish it off. Nice game one advantage to Infernal. Okie dokie gang, well, up one game theory stays in because this is a king of the hill format remember and he's going to be going for that double conclave expand now up against kiwian now back on his old alias of top which i always preferred it's a beautiful name top down here going for a fast expand on um what's this map called again it's uh, uh so there's broken crown this one is secluded grove that's the name getting my names correct but the, the, the two green maps broken crowns the one we play a little bit more secluded grove probably being the second most popular map and we're going to see some immediate creeping here off this early shrine. Now, it's always easy to get your shrine down quickly on this map because the opponent's dog tends to go around the map looking for those little pickups of bonus resources that are on this map specifically. And I'm really curious to see how this one goes. The heavy pressure um, opening, I think, basically actually worked pretty well at the start. It seemed like by delaying the expansion quite a lot, forcing a shroud stone for um for eric but at the end of the day in the mid game just over committed with a few of those fights and uh also didn't manage his economy correctly a few times his workers were off mining and that sort of stuff so definitely cost him chicken does go down resource camp is there it's gonna be interesting to see what happens gaunts and fiends moving up to the left side try and keep creeping that gaunt versus the dog a dog does a dog beat a gaunt? I actually don't know if a dog beats a gaunt. If they are both unupgraded, it looks like the gaunt maybe barely wins that. I thought a dog won that fight, but could be wrong. All right, guys, we've got the goat camp, the serral camp up here in the left side going to be taken out next. Good way to get a few more of these fiends spawning and get that creeping spiral effect. Ooh, good pullbacks on these gaunts, and that will take care of those goats. Extra fiend spawning, extra damage, get the speed camp, and that's where you really start to explode. Now, heavily into Ethereum off the two barracks follow-up. We would expect the Biokinetics Lab to go down now, and a sentry post on the expansion. So, top is going to be going for Biokinetics Lab, two ranks Lancer. Probably follow that up with Exos, and then Medtex. It's a very standard play. There's nothing special here. And that's weird, because top is... A lot of people I've seen in the comments call him a one-trick pony an all-in noob, a cheesy idiot. Uh, just saying, good to see that the macro elitists have come over from other games straight into Stormgate, by the way. They're like, he attacks too much. I don't like this guy. He's an idiot. Good to see, guys. Don't get me wrong. I say the exact same thing when these guys beat me, but I'm very diplomatic otherwise. No, <laughs> he's a very, very good player. And he actually has a lot of range as well. Top's a very good RTS player. He was one of the best in the early days of StarCraft 2. But uh, let's see how he deals with this early... I mean, it's not a super fast Gaunt drop by any means. It's only going to hit at like 4 minutes 40. A lot of creeping has happened though. And it does look like a pretty solid economic setup for Theory. He's also got an Iron Vault behind this. So he can reactively build Brutes as needed up against any sort of Lancer push. Now, so far, we don't see any Exos out. There's just one Lancer waiting for this Gaunt drop. The minimap is really tiny pig. That's a good point, guys. So this is the um, interface. I like the interface being shrunk when I play so that I can... It doesn't fill up as much space, but I actually do want the minimap to be bigger when casting. So you know what? I can crank that back up to a bigger size for you guys, even right... Well, I do it right now, but we're about to see a fight. I don't think the Lancer upgrade's done just yet. I think this is a pre-upgrade attack timing. No, it's just kicked in. Oh, that's a pretty fast upgrade. Five minutes, seven Lancer timing. That Doombringer did bring home its payload of Gaunts. That one Gaunt almost going down. The Fiends and the Brutes adding some decent damage. More Gaunts getting in here as well. 
And using the Doombringer to get a little bit of that regen of the White Armor. Nice pickups! Ooh, Theory saving a bunch of damaged uh, units there on low hit points. Two Lancers hiding in the corner of the main tops being annoying. It's not the biggest commitment, just leaving two Lancers in there. But uh, they will get hunted down relatively quickly. Ooh. Uh, StarCraft players always riot, riot about me using the right side minimap. But I think this is going to be the default for most non-StarCraft uh, gamers. I'm not sure where it is by default in AoE. I'm pretty sure it's left side as well, actually. What am I? I'm abandoning my StarCraft, Warcraft, Age of Empires roots. What can I say, guys? I, uh, I'm abandoning it. I don't know. I, I, I don't mind it on the right. I like having these buttons lined up above my keyboard buttons. It's a nice new friendly thing. AoE is right side as well. Yeah, I guess I just got used to that really quickly in Age of Empires. Maybe that's why I didn't freak out as much as StarCraft players and I didn't even notice when it was on the right. I don't mind. Maybe, actually, maybe in Definitive Edition I was swapping it to the left because I'm pretty sure that's customizable. I could be wrong. I feel like I've played enough games at this point I can adjust to whatever and it doesn't really make that much difference. Gaunt's coming in. Gonna go after these bobs. Lancer pressure on the other side. Brutes fight okay against Lancers, but they're so outnumbered. Oh, this is really bad. Oh, he's in big trouble. Oh, he's in big trouble. Theory's in huge trouble right now. This Lancer timing, if he gets on top of those units, he's gonna kill all of those imps. In the main base, though, Fiend Spawn starting to spiral a little bit, but the Lancer turret with the Mass Repair and the Overcharge will defend. Oh, he's screwed, man. Imps desperately setting themselves on fire to try and defend this Lancer push. Dude, Top's ability to just attack with these sort of builds is so good. And you see that? Dodges the Lancer explosion. That one gets a big boom boom. When your opponent's having to sacrifice workers to defend your pressure, you know you're in a pretty good spot. Four Gaunts come down. And Gaunts, of course, one of the worst units in the game at fighting against Lancers. Um, it's just they're the only ranged kind of unit you have access to. So you kind of build them because... Uh, if you Otherwise, they can kite brutes to death and all that sort of thing. But the Infest really does not do damage to them. And... That, that kind of extreme counter of the Lancer to the Gaunt, but the Gaunt and its infest and its ability as a ranged unit being so core, is such an interesting thing. And I've noticed that's the number one thing I see complaints about. People when they go, I'm playing Infernal. They're so weak. You can't deal with Lancers. They're so cracked. And I definitely understand that. That is like a big power point is the Lancer. The funny thing is, if you don't actually hit the Lancers with Gaunts, I feel like they don't look that powerful. But it's the buff that they get from your Gaunts hitting them, doing so little damage, that makes them so powerful in engagements. So there's this thing where a lot of Infernal players are kind of biting themselves in the butt by focusing so heavy on Gaunts without having enough other supporting units, whether it's Shroud Stones or Brutes, to deal with it. <clears throat> here we go, guys. We've got that fourth shrine going down. Third base is up fully here for top. Top moving out with Exos now as well. Don't think we're in a great position right now. Shadow Clef's still not up, which means yeah, I feel like right now Top's a bit ahead of the curve, even though he's three base against four. Oh, Flame On, Flame On drop. Big Flame On drop. A couple of Gaunts and six Imps. Takes out 12 Bobs here. Gets a few Fiend spawns from it. That's what we refer to as a big juicy. Um, I had someone get very upset at me recently. They said that pig's casting is too uh, visceral and dirty and it's too uh, sexual, I believe was the exact word. And they said, because I say that's a big juicy when there's a big hit, they said that's too sexual. I said, what do you think I'm referring to? Like, just a big juicy hit. It's a good hit. It's satisfying, you know? And they're like, that's sexual. And I'm like, is it? <laughs> I, I know I say things with a lot of passion in my voice. Sometimes I do get excited, <laughs> but I never intended that one to be anything sexual. <laughs> people are like no <laughs> anyways this is a really good catch if you can deny this shrine this might be a game winning move for top right now we've got lancer exo in here um oh I, this is way too early to be on hellborn man i still think people are going hellborn a bit too early in the game they are a great unit but if they get caught out they're really not mobile and it's just it's such a successful push so far Oh, he even put the shield on that Lancer there. He's getting on top of the Gaunts. He's going to back away. And I think backing away with a lot of damaged Lancers and healing them and coming back late is such a good underused play right now. I love to see it. Obviously, no med techs, but he could just move down to the healing camp, kill the Rocket Deer. And of course, that's the first thing he does. Beautiful play, man. 
massive exos as well. Heal these lances for a little bit, add some extra units and get going. Now, fiends are denying any fourth base, but top is like, look, do I really need a fourth base? Not if I'm denying yours and using you moving out to your fourth to take good fights. What I'd love to see from top is pulling a few bobs and doing that... Um, the trees are already torn down. What am I talking about? He already tore these trees down. I'm like, I'd like to see him. And then I'm like, he literally did that on the previous attack, pig. He already tore those trees down. But look at that. Another denial on the fourth. So theory is going to be kind of turtling on three base. To be fair, top is not that far ahead on three base. I wouldn't mind top. Oh, look at that. Tears down the trees on the left side. Takes the top left base. I love that. A kind of hidden expand. And I wonder if theory is going to start wondering and go, where are they? Where are they? Hmm. Now, um, I think the other thing you want to do is potentially split your army to get all these resource camps and speed camps. If you go around get uh, split your army in two on this map, you can take three, three, four camps on the left, three, four camps on the right, and that's great. Theory's going to risk the middle. Hellborn are very good in an entrenched position in the middle, but top is a very high level Terran player in StarCraft. And Terran players are known for basically just running Marines and Medivacs and Marauders around into your backline and killing all your stuff. They're not known for headbutting into entrenched defensive positions. So as long as he goes around, which he's already in position to do right now, he can take out a bunch of production, pick off a base, split his army and start multi-pronging. Multi I can speak good English. Hellborn coming in from behind. He's got to be careful. Doesn't want to get cornered. Single imp does set itself off on the lances. I like the way Theory's using single imps to force reactions without overcommitting positionally. Oh no, Hellborn are in the open. The Hellborn should be focus fired on the middle of the Exos. Those Exos were exposed. Unfortunately, he didn't focus fire his Hellborn. Now, obviously it's it's dangerous focus firing Hellborn because then if they move out of range, all your Hellbot, Hellborn animation cancel their attacks and kind of screw up and waste a lot of charge up time. But he's getting jumped on. There's just too many units. Too many mobile units and Hellborn very good in the later stages, but at this small st scale stages, small scale battles, you can see they do struggle. The chickens joining the Hellborn side, the uh, the side of the Infernals there, but not going to be enough to take him out. I love that level six chicken, man. It's actually killing units like crazy. Level six chicken's pretty tough, dude. Finds the middle base as well, and that is going to tie up the series. I'm pretty sure top takes out Theory here. He's got a massive advantage now. Fourth base in the top left. Massive army advantage. And taking out the base in the middle. Desperation flame on kills like two or three exos, but you're happy to trade a couple of exos for a lot of workers. That's going to be deadly. All right. Shout out to Frost Giant for dropping in the chat. How you doing, gang? Thanks for dropping by. Shout out to Kiwian, aka top now. Our Vanguard player who actually created this show match. He is a streamer. You guys can find him over at twitch.tv forward slash Kiwian. And um, he's streaming, partying, streaming. Bunch of guys all streaming, casting, and playing in this probe as well. Lying in wait. Um, so it is partying, theory, and uh, mana hanging out as well. And we've got Eric, Top, and Probe on the Vanguard team. Infernal team, I would say, is favored. Man is very, very, very good. Missed out on the EGC tournament and is chomping at the bit to get some revenge. Theory's very good as well. I mean, he has already won a game and he's fighting back. Unfortunately, he has 12 imps on one Theory patch there. 14 now. Oh, no. I guess he just uses this as his imp rally point to gather them up before using Flame on. But he desperately needs a fourth base so he can be mining with those in the meantime. Oh, nice little fiend run by to the top left there, guys. Ooh, okay. Sentry post should be repaired. Eh, probably didn't need to overcharge there, but that's all right. Just going to A-move. Bobs do fantastic damage with overcharge on, and he barely saves that sentry post. And builds a few more as well now that the base has been figured out. He realizes that's going to be a prime run-by target for his opponent for the rest of the game. Theory didn't really use a lot of his top bar abilities, so he's able to save up to a flayed dragon here already at the 14-minute mark. That's a lot of Exos. Oh, he's going Atlases as well. Okay, top showing some depth to his tech. I do feel like with only two Therium patches, he probably should be trying to take the middle with how much of an advantage he's had this game. Because he's got more of a mobile army, he didn't want to cement himself in a static position. Lancer comes in and does scout this base. Can he get that imp? Oh, I think he's gonna get it. He gets an imp despite the whole army being there. That's hilarious. Lancer gets Omega buffed. 
as it takes damage. Yeah, no Vulcans this game, guys. Vulcans are a good unit, but they're very slow. Top is a fast player. He likes to get going. Oh, Atlas already firing on that imp. And it will get another shot off, taking out a few of those fell hogs. Poking in here, not a bad idea. But once the Hellborn get there, it will be hard to go forward. Oh, that Shroudstone just took a massive amount of damage. Shroudstone's very fragile compared to the epic damage of the Atlas. Atlas pulling itself back here. You can't fight into this choke point with the Brutes, though. And even the Super Shroudstone does go down very, very quickly. Remember the attack, the BFG, the big friggin' gun. Definitely what it's called, friggin' for sure. Uh, 80 damage a shot from that Atlas. It does a crazy amount of damage. I believe it does 50% uh, uh, friendly fire with any of its damage. And it does, of course, have Radius of Rings. Imps flaming on, not finding big hits. Flay Dragon on the right it was picking off a few units nicely. Over here on the left, it looks like the Imps have found that base. Hellborn are trying to hold position. Theory's got to be careful. He does suck the infest off. Now, the way the dragon works is it can infest... Oh, Flay Dragon! I mean, the, 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 sorry, the, the imps, they get a few units, but I don't think it's enough for how many imps went down there. The Flay Dragon can infest an area and then suck that infest off the units to instantly deal the full infest damage and heal itself based on how many units it, it can do that. And it heals white armor specifically, not its main hit points. Imp's getting picked off. He's getting worn down. Top's army is getting thinned out a little bit, so he does have to be a little cautious. That one shielded lance that just tanks an insane amount of damage at the front of the fight. And uh, finally, we will see the army turn and decide to take him out. Up here, we've got a shrine and a uh, post right next to each other. The shrine quickly popping out some imps, but those are going to be flaming on, taking out the sentry post, getting some decent damage. A shrine counterattack in the middle. That is not something I've seen before. He, he literally used the ability to get extra charges, popped out three imps at once, flamed them on, took out a sentry post, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> Here we go. Exo's taking big... Oh, oh my god! <laughs> ow! Ow, 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 ow. Those were some good flame ons right there. Dude, Theory's hanging on like a champ. Theory has a ton of fiends right now chasing these med techs back. Uh, the Hornets are going to do okay. Atlas is getting some good shots off. Exo's fighting as well. Flay Dragon in the middle. Gaunts are going, dude, dude, is Theory actually going to bring this game back? I called it as being over against him so long ago. Hornets do beat the Flay Dragon pretty hard. There are still Atlases here, but you've got to protect these bobs. You cannot let these bobs get taken out. The Sentry Post trying to fight the Hornets. Watch out for the Shadow Flyer. Shadow Flyer coming in. He loses both of his Hornets. The Flay Dragon gets out on 200 hit points, 60 white armor. He doesn't have many other units. Remember, Theory's money is so low because he's only on three base. The main is mined out. Top, his main and natural have mined out, but Top has the middle and the top left base. Top has so much more money to work with. And basically, if Theory wins this game, either Top blundered really hard or Infernal's really overpowered or, or Theory's a god, or maybe with big comebacks, it's a little bit of all three. You never know exactly in a game like this with such limited information in the casting overlay. It's kind of fun. It's like casting a StarCraft 1 game where you're just kind of guessing what's happening and looking at the units. There's a lot of suspense. I actually quite enjoy it. I know a lot of people have said, oh, man, I can't watch it. There's not enough numbers. I need to know. For me, it's kind of fun just being in this constant figuring out based on what I see zone. I think it's really good for my pattern recognition as well for learning the game because I don't have like a supply count that just tells me who's going to win a fight before it happens, you know? I don't have any production tab telling me what tech's going to come out ahead of time so i kind of have to be thinking a little bit more and actually learning the game on a deeper level whereas you can kind of get by in starcraft and pretend you know what you're talking about literally by just reading all of the information tabs and you sound like you're reasonably smart just outed myself a little bit there all right guys so we've got gaunt flay dragon brute coming south still a few shadow flyers looking to flank this middle base you cannot let this middle base stay up though Theory just does not have an army. What do you got? A few Gaunts of Flayed Dragon. I mean, you're going to take out some chickens here. Flayed Dragon is tanking pretty well. Even though if the Flayed Dragon died to chickens, that would be the funniest thing. But no, it sucks up that infest. Sprays cooties on the enemy. Sucks it off them. And uh, damn, those two Shadow Flyers go down to the Exos. Atlas push on the right side again. Super Shroudstone goes down. But nice save there on those Atlases. They will take that down. Infest goes down from the Dragon. Ooh, you got to be careful, mate. The burning ground from those atlases does a very good damage over time as well. I'm not sure what the exact damage is, guys. 15 damage per second for 5 seconds. That's a lot. That's actually a lot of damage. That's a very significant... A lot of games have very 
almost meaningless damage over time effects. That one's actually rather significant. Gonna go for the counterattack, says I can't defend that position. Let's go to the middle. This is a good choice. Really smart choice. Look at how many fiends he's already spawned. Top was a little slow to pull his bobs away. He takes quite a bit of damage. Hornet's coming forward. They do need to go after that flayed dragon. Every now and then, it just randomly clicks you elsewhere on the minimap. But, oh, looks like they all got taken out. All the hornets are gone, only one left. Medtech gets pulled to the front. But there's just so many Exos, and the Exos will get the job done. There aren't that many veteran Exos. A lot of them have been dying, but even having a few level 1, level 2 Exos is huge. It's kind of like having upgrades on them. It really feels like it's quite big. One of the Atlas has actually died to infest there. So even if you pick up a low hit point Atlas into the evac, and it's flying away, if you then... Wait, where, where, where are these imps? Where are they blowing up? Bottom right? Maybe? No, oh, imps are fighting there. Hearing those imps make their little sound effect is always like, ooh, what's happening? But I think Theory's done, guys. He actually did a valiant effort from behind. He played very, very well. But at the end of the day, looks like Top's a bit too much. Finding this last base, those imps are probably going to light their fuses and go out in flaming wonder. Flame on! But uh, a bit less impressive than the Fantastic Four version. Oh, Flay Dragon comes down. <clears throat> Hornet could activate a shield to beat it, potentially. Exos are here. Flay Dragon gets out. Flay Dragon's such a good harassment unit. And I love the way these Exos were pre spread to not get taken out by the imps. Beautiful play. <clears throat> was that the Flay Dragon that just died? Yes, it was. GG. Theory's going to tap out. Good effort, but that does tie up the series one to one. All oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Top is still in here in the top right side of the Vanguard versus Infernal Strike match. In the bottom left side, uh, it's now tied up one to one. And coming out for the Infernals is Mana. And he's going for a single conclave into an expand. We are a minute 20 in, we're starting after the initial movement, but four workers on Ethereum already. I would be expecting a second conclave or Iron Vault to come out soon and, uh, and then a meat farm soon afterwards. That should be happening in a moment. Only eight out of 12 mining right now rather than 10. That's interesting. This is a very heavy Ethereum build. I wonder if mine is going for an even faster drop than players normally go for. And it looks like he wants to do a wall off. Oh, ooh. so he's going to get a second structure at the natural. Cool. I have seen the um, the build orders start to evolve a little bit. So it looks like he's going to go Iron Vault and then Meat Farm down here as well by the looks of it to create a bit of a wall off. I like this choice. Just making it harder for dogs or anything like that to open. Remember, you don't have a lot of scouting. And actually, no, it's, it's two Conclaves and an Iron Vault. Ooh. Oh, but the Gaunt's trapped. Oh, no. Oh, nice block. He stops it getting onto the ramp. Oh, top gets a gaunt kill, gets level one veterancy. He's going to go back, find some more of those healing flowers on the map, eat those up. There's one back here and there's one in the top left as well. And then he can get back in there. And behind it, he's fast expanded. So it's a fast expand into two barracks coming out. And now up to the 10 workers that's a bit more optimal on the Luminite. I don't know why he was this heavy on the Ethereum. I don't know if there's some sort of push that Mana's planned. But his build order is definitely a little bit different. We'll, we'll see what happens. Normally, you try to get eight workers on the Illuminate, and then you, you basically put four workers on, and you pull two of them off. Or you put two, you pull the first two of the four off. It's, it's complicated. Go watch Probe's YouTube if you guys want to really understand how it works. But basically, the first 10 out of 12, as long as you get them mining on the far patches, they're more efficient than the close patches. Unfortunately, Mana didn't do that optimization, so he has three mining here and three mining here. Don't worry, guys. Mana's in Europe. I have an excuse. It is currently three hours past night. It's midnight. It's past midnight in Poland. It's, he's sleepy. It, it, he's going to make slight build inefficiencies. It doesn't matter. That's a small efficiency thing. I'm sure he'll fix it later on. For now, though, he has built a lot of production on two base. I think we're getting a shroud stone at the front to be safe. And uh, it is part of... Are you paying him for that, that plug? Yeah. For those who don't know, people are asking in the live chat, they're saying, well, Pro, because he's in the chat, he's, he's waiting in the wings. He's the, one of the next uh, Vanguard players, or he's the next Vanguard player. Um, he, he, what you guys don't realize is literally Probe, anything I am saying here is literally Probe with a, I'm a puppet. He has his hand right up inside me and he's just like doing the mouth, the mouth movements and stuff and all that sort of stuff. And, and he's like, oh, hey guys, John, my name's Pig. Like basically everything I know about this game is from studying the game by watching and talking to him. He, he has explained everything that I understand about this game, which is not that much. I only understand about half of what he's told me. But a uh, nice Gaunt drop coming in at 420. 
420 Gaunt drop is actually stronger than 420 because, uh, 4 minutes, sorry, because of the power of memes. He's going to go past the natural into the main base. Not a bad way to do it. Oh, he's going to drop in the main. Try and focus the bobs down. And normally an overcharge gets used here, but either he already used it to build buildings or he's just being very patient on that. Oh, oh he gets a building that was building and two bobs. Very nice harassment. That was really well done. Good focus fire. Gets out once the lances are there. And that keeps Top pinned. Top still getting his Lancer upgrade. He probably wants to go put on counter pressure, but Mana has a, a lovely wall off. A nice drop on the low ground, pick up, move to the high ground. He's going to abuse that high ground, low ground dynamic. Top has to split his units up, otherwise he's going to be in trubs. You cannot just be A moving your army around. One Lancer will not deal with this. And he finally does use the overcharge to deflect that wave, while these Lancers desperately move across the map for a pressure. It's going to be later than normal though. It does feel like normally he hits a little bit earlier than this. So I feel like Mana's actually done a great job of pinning him back. What's Mana got to defend though? His third is very exposed. He has a Shroud Stone, a few Brutes. He's building more Iron Vaults as well as a Shadow Cleft, but they're not ready just yet. Okay, drop still harassing, forcing Lancers to stay at home and he recalls it. He uses the recall. I, if anyone knows the name of the recall, type it in the chat. I'm sure it has some cool name like Demon Butt, butt or something. Demon Teleport. I don't know, Void Rip? You guys let me know. None of those are actually the name. Uh, Lancer, gonna go after the shrine. I think, oh, tax his own shrine to bounce on the enemy. Not really worth it against Lancers because you do so little damage there. It's definitely called Demon Butt or Demon Guzzler according to Twitch chat. Good to know everybody knows their Stormgate names just like I do. Oh, tries to take the deer camp, the healing one. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, look how fast those lances are. Top dives on top of the gaunts, but good pullback by mana. And no lo notice he's got the Doombringer. So if they get on top, he can still quickly pick them up into the Doombringer. Doombringer's a bit out of position right now. He's trying to fight. He needs Shroud Stones here. You can't really defend these Lancer attacks without some real da damage. And, and without Shroud Stones, I feel like you just don't have that much damage. Don't get me wrong, Shroud Stones, you might think 12 damage, not that much. But Gaunts only do six, and Lancers reducing coming damage by three with their goddamn, whatever it's called, uh, attenuation armor. Attenuation armor? Ugh. Not my favorite name. Um, oh, Magmadon drop! Combat drop, Magmadon! Combat drops the Magmadon in the Lancers, starts getting some good stuns off. It does do good damage, but good avoidance on a lot of that with the Lancers. Dude, Top is all over it with this mass Lancer attack. He's looking pretty damn good right now. This Shroudstone here does help. I think Mana might need to build another Shroud Stone or two to stabilize, and he's got to pull back and really fight with those Shroud Stones. Magmadon gets another Stompy Stomp off. Stompy Stomp is the technical name of the ability, guys. The Demon Hoof Tremors has not been upgraded, which is why it isn't mini stunning yet, but I'm sure he's upgrading that behind this. Third base shrine, hanging on by a thread, and Top goes in there, snips that thread right off. Magmadon is way too low at this point. He's going to have to swap that Magmadon out for a healthier one and try to use this second Magmadon to get some real damage done. A mostly Gaunt army is incredibly vulnerable right now. He uses the stun, but all that does is keep them at bay. Third base up behind it, Top is playing a fantastic game. Now, he did not bother with a hanger at all. He's just got three barracks, and he's still going on the front. He's going in. Oh, the Magmadon does some pretty good damage. Saves into the Doombringer at the last second. Still no Demonhoof Tremors upgrade on that. That's a, a problem. He needs that upgrade. Otherwise, he's going to be struggling against this. And losing his third base, Mana is in huge trouble. Top is an absolute menace with his Lancers. Now, remember, Parting is waiting in the wings for the Infernal team. So if there's an answer to it, Parting will be the guy to show it. And Parting, I mean, we often see him beat builds that, in quotation marks, counter his builds with a little thing called best micro in the world. Um, he, he just micros his way out of trouble. He, he finds a way to win games. He looks fantastic. Magmadon holding a choke point. Guys, I thought a Zealot holding a choke point against Zerglings looked good, but a Magmadon holding a choke point is not something you want to try and force your way through. So people are asking, how do you deal with Lancers? Are they just overpowered? So Gaunts do nothing against them, but most um, Infernal players, particularly Infest is so good when you're winning, they... Oh, you guys are asking for game sound? It's too quiet? Sorry, I can hear it okay. You guys can't? Okay, let me crank that up. Hopefully that's not too loud. Oh, the sound was fine. 
Oh, it was fine before? Oh, no. All right, we're going to go to 40. Midway. Let me know if it gets too loud. Um, the, the sounds aren't complete, guys. This game is in, in like a beta alpha sort of state. Still early days, so there's a lot of things that don't have sounds, but there is a decent amount of combat sounds, and there is music playing in the background as well. Oh, Imp tries to move out to take a third on the backside. Mana is just so pinned in right now, and look at that Lancer. It kills, it kills the Imp. Oh my god. Okay, it finally goes down, but look, his third base down here is going to die at the same time. Oh no. That is so unfortunate. He doesn't even cancel it. That, I think Mana feels like he's already lost at this point. He's got a very high-tech army, like Hellborns, Magmadons, Doombringers, but he just doesn't have a lot of stuff. This is kind of like, I mean, to describe Mana's situation in StarCraft terms, guys, he has one Battlecruiser, one Raven, uh, two Siege Tanks, and six Marines. It's, it's just kind of like, it's a hodgepodge. They're all good units if he can mass them, but he only has a few. He doesn't have everything he needs, and the Lancers are going to come back in for another cancel. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that base does get cancelled. Double Magmadon drop! Oh, my God! Double Magmadon drop! Oh, my God! That was sick. Guys, for those who don't know, Mana is the comeback master in StarCraft 2. He is known as one of the, the sloppier macro players in a very normal game. But the moment he falls behind or the game gets messy, Mana becomes an absolute god. There is a mythical creature, which is Mana when he's behind in a game, and he becomes one of the best players in the world. He's some of the best engagements, Clutch Micro. He is a sicko from behind. If he could actually just basically um, not be so far behind and pull off fights like that, it would be the most one-sided games you'd ever see. That was a sick fight, but it was only a small part of Top's army. Don't get too excited yet. He's trying to double expand to a third and a fourth. He still needs a lot of work to do. And he can do it. I, I do believe in Mana's abilities. He's got this clutch understanding of engagements and tactics. But Top is right now in macro mode. Four bases, big army. Fiend run by gets blocked. Interestingly, he's pretty slow to med techs. Most players go a couple med techs pretty early. Notice Top just tries to get a critical mass of exos. But he doesn't have a lot of veterans he spread across them. He did lose a lot of his Lancer and Meat Shield. And as the Hellborn count grows, you do have to be careful of those Hellborn shots landing in the center of your exos. That being said, keep in mind, Hellborn are very fragile units if they get caught out. So you do not want them to get caught out in the open. If they get caught out in the open, it can ruin you. Drop in the top left. Nice move. Double Magmet on drop. And just picks up and moves to another base. Wise choice. From up here, you can basically hit that Therium, but hit that Therium or this base. And look, he goes straight back in on the same base. Oh! Oh, look at the way the Magmadon dropped over to the right. So this is one thing, because the units are a bit more blocking and they take up more area, in StarCraft, the Magmadon would have just squeezed in between some of the units or buildings. But Stormgate couldn't find a space for it, so it popped the Magmadon over to the right which did not look right. So I think that's something that's still being worked on a little bit. I do think they don't want units to squish together quite as much as like a StarCraft style game where everything gets stuck on top of each other and splash damage is crazy. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Infernal's really weak in the late game, says someone in Twitch chat. Now that's an interesting comment. I... Mana is so far behind. He has maybe half of the supply in this game. I would not be reading late game from this. This one's been all about the early game. Oh, the combat drop is sick. He just has no support for it. Oh my god. He used the AoE infest. Double Magmadon combat drop. What was I telling you guys in the first game today about Magmadon combat drops? People are like, Magmadons are bad. Magmadons are sick. He just killed an entire army with three Magmadons, a Doombringer, and the giant salami that he's packing in his pants. That was absolutely incredible. That was the best Magmadon drop I have ever seen. What the hell? Oh my god. I, I've always said, people just basically, for the last month of Stormgate, have just walked Magmadons towards Exos, and the Exos just shoot, pull back, shoot, pull back. And I'm like, guys, Magmadons are a really good unit, but you need to flank them, come from behind. And everyone just looks at me blankly with their empty expression, and they're like, but Pig, you're not a high-level player. And I'm like, I know I'm not. I understand how real-time strategy games work. AOE unit, slow unit, needs to hit them from behind. People like look at me and they're like, No, nah, don't know, pig. Magmanon, bad. I'm like, yes, if you walk it towards your opponent, it's bad. I was literally ranting to my wife about this two days ago. I was like, people need to flank with their goddamn Magmadons. 
And she's nodding and smiling. She's like, yes, Jared. Very interesting. The the magma chons need to do the thing. Yes. And I'm like, no, seriously, people need to do this. Mana, apparently, 10 times smarter than every other pro gamer, does it perfectly. And he's literally resurrecting himself from the grave. This is that goddamn Kill Bill scene where she punches herself out of the grave. He is playing like a monster. It's going to be a bit of a base raid. Flame on for the defense, but he activates a little bit too early. Oh, a f he only connects with a few of them. Great pullback there for top. But at the same time, Magmadons get on the high ground and are slaughtering so many units. Oh my god. This is ridiculous, dude. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The Magmadons, the Stompy Boys. And this is the way RTS works. Units have super extreme strong points and they have super extreme weak points. And that's why I, th there's always a thing. And I was talking about this earlier today. When you encounter imbalance in RTS, there are two options you have as a player. And this is what separates the great from the good. The good go, oh, that's unfair. Game is hard. Mm. And the great go, that is really unfair. How do I beat that unfair thing? Magmanons are uncomfortable units. They're not easy to get on the enemy. How do I get them there? How do I get on top of the enemy? And Mana put his mind to it, and he just figured out how to do fantastic. He waited for him to come up the ramp, flanked him from behind, and has now turned this game around. He has literally clutched victory from the jaws of defeat. Absolute Chad Gamer using great Magmadon flanks, positioning, and Doombringer drops with them to bring himself back from a game where he was deep down there in the dumps. He was pretty much dead. This is a wondrous game. Remember, Infernal have pretty good defensive mechanics with meat canyons, shroud stones, defensive shroud stones you can drop down, as well as, of course, your units popping out out of your charges so you can produce very quickly. Top has to tap out. Mana with an incredible comeback. All right, all right, all right, guys. Well, that was an impressive comeback for Mana. I almost thought this was parting for a second here on Jagged Moor, but it's not because Mana just made a disgusting comeback and he's forced out Probe, who in the bottom side of the map is going to go for a fast expand on Jagged Moor. An ambitious build order on the map where not dying to the enemy push is a big deal. Now, people got angry at me when I was casting EGC for saying, oh my god, Lucifron's one base Hornet is really sick. Because all I'd seen up to that point is people trying to expand and then dying um, into Hornets or expanding into barracks and then dying to catapult pushes from Infernal. And then everyone got angry. They're like, that's what everyone does. This is the standard build. Once again, I'm casting another game where someone doesn't go one base Hornet on this map. You guys tell me if I'm crazy. I'm sure on the ladder there was like a week where everyone did it. But obviously I'm not privy to everyone's ladder games. So <laughs> I, uh, I have not seen too much Jagged Moor in general because I was not around when it was being played on the ladder as well. I think that was while I was away in Poland. Oh no, you can't. Oh no. Oh no. Mana loses his, 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 his gaunt. Which means he can't infest those units and he can't kite them to the Shroud Stone. He has to bring a second one. Oh no. Those those rocket deer, man. They hit you with some some fierce vengeance. Oof. There we go. That's that's a bit better. And now he's gonna fight with that Shroud Stone on the high ground. Looks like a Shroud Stone on this high ground, but Probe's gonna kill it. Oh, mana cancels at the last second. Quickly rebuilds. I don't think you get any um, he's, he's only losing 7 Luminite each time he cancels because it's only 25 to build a Shroud Stone. So, cancelling and rebuild costs you almost nothing up here. Looks like... Oh, did he just... He had to come down with both of his units to defend that? Wait, did he lose his other... He lost his other Gaunt! Oh, no! Guys, Marnet really needs to infest these units before he kills them. He's got to make sure he infests them. He's going to try and infest the other deer now. He does manage to infest it, but this has been a sloppy early game. He does just keep cancelling and rebuilding this. Obviously, he's been busy with his micro. He's got to cancel, cancel, cancel. He cancels at the last second. If the dog can block him from building it. Oh, Probe's trying to block him, but he gets it down. And he starts building a meat farm to save that. Here comes the first catapult push, I believe. No, he saved it. He didn't. He, he killed the creeps, but he hasn't activated the siege camp just yet. Okay, now he's going to activate it. He's going to activate it, and he's going to try and kite these guys over. Clear the second siege camp. It's going to be a double catapult push up against two barracks, as well as sentry posts. He's got just basically lances being built. He does have a biokinetics lab, so he's going to try and go for lots of lances with the upgrade, I believe. Dog goes around for the creep, and this is going to be a very hectic game between Mana and Probe. Mana taking out the chickens. The deer are going to go down. He does cancel that shroud stone on the high ground, realizing he probably doesn't need it. Starts a meat farm to keep it safe. Catapult coming forward. Second catapult as well. Um, this is a pretty nice way of doing it. Now, you can block your catapult to try and slow it down, but I think he's happy to just go in. I don't know how Probe is going to defend this man. He's got three lances with no upgrade. The upgrade has not started yet. It's not spinning. 
the Biokinetics Lab just started spinning, which means we've got to wait, like, I think it's about a minute until the upgrade finishes for these Lancers. I like that he's trying to dodge the catapult shots by hanging out front, but it means he is taking little bits of damage from these, uh, these Gaunts as well. Oh, he does take a first big catapult volley to the face. Oh, man. Oh, this is painful. He's got a Shroud Stone to fall back on it as well. Mana here with a nasty one base all in. It's the Jagged Moor. Super powerful push. Ooh, I didn't realize the repair turret could heal other buildings. I thought it could only heal units. That's actually kind of sick. And now that it is tanking the catapults, that would have been the moment to fight. But he just doesn't have enough units to fight, even with the catapults being occupied like that. This is a rough position to find yourself in as Probe, because he doesn't have any ranged units other than the, the towers, and the catapults outrange everything. Oh, massive catapult shots right now. Oh, this is such a problem. Oh my god. Oh, that Lancer gets taken out as well. This looks like it might just be game. The, the, you can try to repair, but the problem is the splash damage is a problem. Yeah, he has to overcharge and just go forward and fight. It's the only way to do this, to go forward and fight. He's got to take out the catapults, but look, any catapult shot is so big. Any catapult shot on the bobs is so big. Luckily, that one is shooting his tower. So that actually does help him. He's going to take out the catapults, but he's going to lose so many bobs doing this. He needs to kill all the gaunts as well. He does have the upgrade on the lancers, but there's just so few lancers left at this point, and he never got through the gaunts. If he got rid of all the gaunts, this might be playable, but without getting rid of the gaunts, it's a tough one. That being said, oh, he's lost one of his barracks as well. Having lost a barracks, he's, he's basically down in the dumps, man. Mass repair trying to go down, but look at that. Just focusing down the bobs to get the easy fiend spawns. Probe has to tap out. Dude, Mana taking Infernal to a 3-1 advantage. GG, well played. All right, guys, they've already used their first revive to bring back top here in the top right side of the map, looking fantastic with his bobs doing some miney mining. In the bottom left side of the map, it is, of course, Mana, who's on an absolute tear right now for Team Infernal. A lot of people thought parting might be going in for the all kill in this all kill format, but it's Mana who is the first obstacle to get over. To be fair, Mana was getting wrecked in his first game against Top, but uh, with that absolute war crime Magmadon drop trapping the Exos, whew, that was a rough one. And funny thing, it's the exact same map spawns, right? Yeah, this is the same map they played on before. The map order was preset, by the way, guys. It kind of rotates through the maps. <clears throat> so I think it's secluded Grove next and then back to Jagged Moor again, I believe is the way we do it. So uh, yeah. I think we're going to see uh, definitely Exo is not getting trapped on a ramp once again. I'm sure he's going to be way more careful about that. I would guess he's probably going to play Hornets because you can't really combat drop a Hornet player. The Hornets can just shoot the Doombringer down too quickly. It's very dangerous to try and combat drop on someone who has Hornets. So good dog micro. You don't really care about your dog taking so much damage on this map. But you gotta be careful. You take like another hit or two, you might die to the infest. He's gonna have to go back and eat the flowers. And that is why you don't care about taking that damage. Second Conclave goes down in the front. Double Conclave, guys. I guess he's gonna build the Iron Vault as well. That does seem to be the standard way of doing it. But remember, he struggled with the Fiend. Uh, the, 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 the Gaunt's getting taken down by that. So I, I do, yeah, I do wonder, does he make more Brutes? Does he just build Shroud Stones at the third? I think Shroud Stones at the third was probably the main thing that Mana was missing last time. <clears throat> Looks like we've got double barracks coming in after the fast expand. This is the standard opening that Top's been doing over and over again. It's a good build as well, man. Oh, Probe has a really good idea, by the way. He's in the chat dissecting that last game. He says... Maybe on that map against two catapults, you actually need to build your sentry posts on the cliff so that you have the high ground advantage and they need to push into range of you in order to fire with the catapults. That's a really good idea. I did not think of that. Obviously talking about how to defend there on Jagged Moor. I like that these gaunts snuck out. Good sneaky move here for Mana. He's going to break this little purple zone. So this little purple thing basically creates a little slow zone. And it means you can kite the units really well. So they start running back, but then they should chase back into you pretty quickly. And it just gives you the ability to take them down while not getting hit. Mana's been getting hit a lot today. To be fair, he's not used to playing with the latency that guys like me and Probe are used to playing with in Australia. But uh, doesn't lose any gaunts, so it's okay. Bob comes in. Ooh! 
Bob came in to open up his back door, but Mana was like, oh, thank you. I'm looking for a third shrine. Personally, guys, if I see someone already knocking my back door down this early, I'm expecting to get cheesed super hardcore. Biokinetics Lab finishes. We should see that upgrade coming in very soon. Wait for that to start spinning in a moment. And it is still just two Barracks Lancer that are going to look to try to run past into the Infernal main base. Now, oh, Dog looking for the Gaunt Snipe. Does he go for it? Does he die for it? No. Yeah, nice resource camp steal. Those Gaunt's going to try and escape. Biokinetics Lab, you can see there, it's now turned green. The Claw is doing some stuff. That's starting to spin. Sparks are flying, and that means the upgrade is going Fully saturated on the expansion and the main base. Only a little bit of Ethereum production. It's a very Luminite-focused build. What makes the Lancer build very easy is you're just focusing on one resource other than that upgrade. I would like to see him use that flower with this one damaged Lancer. Oh, nice. Nice usage there. Heals that up. Gets all those flowers. And what have we got behind this? We've got a single Brute, one Shroudstone, and a few Gaunts. I really think he needs another Iron Vault. He's trying to build a uh, Shroudstone over there. He's got one here. I don't know if he can defend this without more Iron Vaults and Brute production. Brutes are also very expensive. That Shroudstone is going to go down. Nice cancel. He's going to try and probably rebuild that on the left somewhere if he can. But already a pack of Lancers in on top of your base. They don't have the upgrade just yet. And here we go. Building more Brutes. That's exactly what you need to do to counter the Lancers, man. Uh, there is not a complete sound package in the game right now. If you guys are wondering about that, nope. Ooh, oh, oh, nice focus fire. He gets two gaunts. He's going to try and take out the rest of them as well. Good micro with the gaunts from Mana, though. Mana kind of ferrying them behind and does get quite a few brute hits off. Forces him back. Loses a few gaunts, but that's okay. Remember, Shroudstone's on the third is what he's missing. He's building a meat farm there. If he can get one more Shroudstone up there, I think he's pretty safe. He's also going for a ritual chamber. Oh, he's skipping the Shadow Cleft. So Ritual Chamber allows you to get the Imp Flame On upgrade, uh, as well as the upgrade for the Gaunts to give them a movement boost. Oh, he's getting the Shadow Cleft as well. Dude, Mana Tech's so hard. I, I think this is too greedy. Top's so aggressive. This is a scary attack. Top has a third base as well. So Top's in a really good spot. But yeah, I think pulling back to this Choke Point might be the play, or just pulling behind the Shroudstone and that Meat Farm. Shroudstone will help out here. And he's going to try and fight. Brute Shroudstone Meat Farm backing him up. Lancer counts good though. Lancer counts good. Mine is in trubs. Mine has got to be careful. Ooh, but I think the Meat Farm and the Shroudstone just make it very hard to push in there. So Mine is much safer this time. Remember, if Mana gets up that high tier army, he gets the Doombringer, which he's got now. And he gets, uh, he's going to go for a bit of a counter drop with a few Gaunts to try and be annoying. Ooh, the one Gaunt left at home does get focused down. Lancer's trying to take out a few Brutes before they get out of there, and he does get them out. Nicely done. Do we see a factory transition yet? A mech bay, whatever it's called? No, nope, pure barracks. Exos are starting to come out, though. That Doombringer, is it going to dive into the base? There's a sentry post there. He's got to be careful, especially if that Exo gets in there, makes a flat cannon. Oh, get in. if he gets inside the sentry post, there could be a big flame on. Oh, it was a big flame on. He blows up the turret, but he won't be able to kill the bobs with that. I didn't actually see the imps load into the transport, which is why I thought it was only gaunts in there. Nice mass repair to stop anything dying. The reason mass repair is so big is it stops the fiends from spawning. Not only does it save your bobs, but it stops the fiend kind of snowball. So this is something you see all the pros are very quick at mass repairing the units that are getting targeted. And as we know from StarCraft, if a player tries to mass repair a worker, you want to change targets to a different worker that's on the edge of the pack. So it's not as easy for them to swap mass repair. And especially with, like, the bounce damage, it might be very difficult for them to actually, um, even with auto repair, save it in time. He's going again, going again, going again. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, my God. Okay, there's no imps this time. Oh, there is, there is, there is imps, but not as many of them. Oh, my God, this is such a scary moment. If he can take out these bobs, one dies, two dies. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Watch out, watch out. Top, top, he's in trouble. He's losing so many bobs right now. He lost at least five. At least five bobs went down there. Another one goes down. And it looks like he will finally clean this up, but not before taking heavy damage. That being said, big counterattack on the other side of the map. I don't see any Magmadons around. Of course, he's going to be wary of getting Magmadon stomped here. But this is a pretty good army he's got. He sets off a few imps, and those imps are not going to connect in time. Great pullback timing. Remember, after four seconds, once you light the fuse, the imps will explode if that timer runs out and they don't have a chance to blow up on an enemy unit. So great play there. 
Still just Gaunt's Brutes, and oh my god, Magmadon drop again! He comes in, double Magmadon drop! Oh, it's the exact same thing! Oh, Top is in a world of hurt right now. Dude, this is like being a small child picked up by a fully grown adult. A 300 pound, 6 foot 5 jacked man, and he puts you inside the washing machine and then turns it on. It's like getting your head bashed around. It's like getting picked up put in a pillowcase and then smacked against the wall. I don't even know how to describe what it must feel like to be one of those exos. It's like being bloody Simba in that stampede scene at the start of The Lion King, except he doesn't get to, there's no tree. He just, he just gets stomped on by the bloody wildebeests, you know? It's not a good feeling. And Mana is inflicting it upon top right now. And he is showing that with this sick drop play, the, it's so scary to overcommit with the, that bio. The Exos, the Lancers get in trouble, man. Got to get Hornets if you want to shut down the Doombringer. That's why I was saying I thought he would go Hornets this game. But Top maybe not as much of a Hornet-focused player. And that means... I mean, you can focus the Doombringer down, but you got to see it coming. You have to be see it coming. You can't be too predictable with your positioning. And these Exos don't have anything shielding them right now. He's coming from two sides, which is kind of good. Oh god, get out of there. Careful, careful, careful. If, if he can focus the Doombringer, he might be able to shoot it down before the Magmadons drop. Ooh. Yeah, basically it's like being Mufasa in the Stampede, guys. Except you don't get to jump out and, and hang onto the canyon afterwards. Um, very Twitch chat always fixing my analogies. Thank you, gang. Oh no. Oh no. Undefended on the left side. Stompy, Stompy, who wants some fun funds? No Stompy happening yet, actually, because he's busy microing on the right side. He Magmadon drops over there and gets some big hits on the Lancers. One of the Magmadons goes down, but in the top left, dude, those bobs are in trouble. The sentry post will go down, luckily, for top. It's not being microed by mana, but as I say that, I may have cursed it. But those bobs will get away. Third base starting to take heavy damage. Not a lot of raw damage dealing units here. It's all the AoE abilities. But, oh, he comes in on the right as well. There's a Hellborn as well. Dude, Mana is all over this game. And he seems to have Top's number today. The Magmadon Stompy is looking great. This time, he was not as far behind as in the first game. And it's actually looked like a bloody clinic. He's been all over it. He just very safely, securely expanded a fast three bases. And he has now got a massive advantage. Yeah, it's three base, four Top still. But he lost a lot of bobs. His mining is not bad. Though his main's a bit undersaturated. But look. Fourth base is up. Mana saturation, 10 out of 12, 9 out of 12, 8 out of 12, 7. Oh, his saturation is actually not that high either. Mana's income is not that much higher, but it's the fact that he's taking a fifth base against a guy who's stuck on three bases and has a bigger standing army that make this a dire situation for the Vanguard. And remember, Vanguard versus Infernal, it's a, it's a sick little show match that Top put together. I really thought after... I mean, I thought Top should have won that first game. It was very, very much upsetting for him that he let it go. I thought he'd get revenge in the second one, but Mana is a bit too good, dude. And look, he's, he's looking for it again on the left side. He's looking for it. Magmadon, stoppy, stoppies. Oh my god, he does focus down one of them. The second Magmadon also almost gets focused down. And on the left side as well, more Magmadons coming in. Oh my god, the stomps. Oh, dude, so much damage goes down. And yes, he saves a lot of his units. Sorry, guys. The observing is a bit jank right now. It does jump the screen sometimes. But uh, damn, Top has to tap out. Both his lives eliminated. And Mana kicking butt for Team Infernal. All right, all right, all right, guys. Mana in the top right causing havoc. It's secluded Grove, though. And Probe has come out for the Vanguard. He's going to move down with four bobs. Overcharges those. Moves them down to get that expansion speed built. And Mana already walling off his main base. You can't wall off the natural on this map, so he's going for the wall off on the main ramp. One Iron Vault and one Conclave. So he's going to get a mixture of units. He's three on Ethereum and eight on Luminite into a meat farm. So this is interesting. So I basically, just learning the parting drop, always try to get 10 out of 12 on Luminite as quickly as possible after just getting two on Ethereum. Then I rally my extra to Ethereum. I wonder what Mana's using that extra Ethereum for. Maybe he's just building Gaunts a bit earlier because he does seem very eager to creep when he plays, which is a little bit different to how I've, I've been playing it with Parting's Gaunt drop build that I was learning from Probe's Guide. Obviously, my, my knowledge of builds is far inferior to these guys, but uh, I'm curious to see. And ah, he's actually, oh, 
He's pulled off Ethereum onto Luminite, so he's looking for the just either brutes, brutes and fast expand. So he's, he's got just enough Ethereum to make a few gaunts. He's going to do a heavy gaunt brute pressure, and then he's going to expand behind it. <clears throat> he's trying to get more Luminite so he can expand behind this opening pressure. No sentry post just yet. He should have overcharge available, and he's going to try and just fight this. I think he might need to speed build a sentry post, though. That might be the more important thing, because, yeah, you're just going to run away from overcharged bobs. That bob on the top is going to take a lot of damage. That's his target. Great pullback. Look at that. Clicks it on the Luminite. Gets it out. Lances out. Super easy defense for Probe. And the Shrine has not started for Mana. It feels like this hasn't done a lot for Mana just yet. Oh, and look. He's attacking his own barracks. Look at that, guys. So notice he's attacking his own barracks, but they reduced the bounce range. So as long as the Brutes don't go in range, attacking his own barracks will not bounce to the enemy units anymore. Whereas the Gaunt Bouncers are still bouncing off these close targets to get on there. So this is a trick you do, is you try to attack your own building sometimes to get the bounce to hit the enemy units that are out of range. I like the Lancer Micro there. He's just going to build a second sentry post to cover that barracks, and he should be good. Gaunt Brute trying to deal with it. Lancer coming forward. Oh, if he can get that Gaunt! Good pullback for both sides. Shrine is about halfway done, but I definitely give the economic momentum towards Pro. The only problem is if he can get... If his, like, Hornet tech gets delayed because of the heavy pressure and he gets stuck on pure bio. Because we've seen pure bio is pretty much what Mana wants to play against. Oh, he steals the... I like that he steals the vision camp. And the dog! Probe! Manages to get a Brute on the left with his Lancers. His dog comes in from the right and kills a Gaunt. Great micro for Probe. And those Lancers are now going to push Mana back. And he gets his own vision camp, which was fantastic. He's looking for, I think, uh, resource pickups or something down here. Maybe he was just running away to get them out. The dog to safety. The bestest boy. But, uh-oh. Those Fiends. He's going to lose a Lancer. He might lose a second one. Oh, Fiends are so good at taking down Lancers, dude. They're so good at blocking them. The Lance is going to kill a few of the Fiends, but it will go down. And it's absolutely worth losing these free units in order to kill Lancers this early. Hanger is up, so he is still... And he's got the Solar Habitat there that's boosting its production by 25%. He's using the repair matic to repair the Dog, as well as his Shrine. He's going to have to swap that around and get that Lancer inside to get the Buzzsaw Cannon. Is that what it's called, guys? The Saw Launcher? Saw standing for Serrated angled weapon launcher i don't know what saw stands for you guys let me know isn't the saw the name of that machine gun as well isn't that like a name for was it the m249 or something like that one of those one of those lovely machine guns that was in cs or something anyways nice dude this hornet's getting value three gaunt kills super awesome weapon duh says chat oh so the bfg is the big fun gun and this is the super awesome weapon okay i i get it i get it i like it Saw stands for M249 Squad Automatic Weapon. Ooh, thank you, chat. I don't know why I've been using so many random military references recently. I haven't even been watching any war stuff or reading into any military stuff. I haven't read a Tom Clancy novel since I was like 15. <laughs> I don't know, man. Anyway, good value on the first Hornet, lowering the Gaunt count. We've got the third base coming up on the right side. Double Hornet production. Oh, Probe's favorite style, Double Hornet. And the thing is, if you can just force them to build like a billion Shroud Stones, it kills so many of their imps on static defense. And static defense really is not that good. And he's making more Conclaves. Gaunts are not great against Hornets. Shadow Flyers are really necessary in my opinion. And I think the fact that Probe has now scouted four Conclaves, he's going to be like, oh, you're just making these? He might just double down on Hornets super hard. And with a combination of pulling back weak ones with the return to Hangar ability, um, as well as using the shield at the opportune moment. If he can like catch those gaunts out a few, once or twice more, it's going to be a slippery slope. And once you've already gone four conclaves, transitioning into a Twilight Spire into Shadow Flyers is so awkward. So I really worry if Mana loses any more of these gaunts to any stray pickoffs from this Hornet harass, this game could get out of control very, very quickly. Okay, Hornet's trying to deny the Fiend. They decide it's not worth chasing him down. Speed camp level two on the right side. Going to be the next target of these Gaunts. But that means they're not in position. 
And the Hornets are going to run in on the left, take out a Shroudstone. That's a dead imp, plus 25 Luminite down. The other imps rallying in will go down very quickly as well. You can stand and just attack the shrine, but of course, going off to work is, is always one of the highest value ways of doing damage. Oh, he pops his shield as well on the weak one. And of course, as long as you don't lose any, you kill a few gaunts, you kill a few imps, you go back and heal, you're good. What you want to watch for is if Probe starts losing Hornets, that's when he's in big trouble, okay, guys? He attacked his own, you see that? Attacked his own to try and bounce onto the Hornets. Didn't quite get it. Great pullback timing from Probe. Sends back the three damaged one to heal, and he's just going to keep making Hornets. Hornets have a good bonus to uh, light units, for those who don't know. They do eight damage to ground, but they attack 0 0.4 seconds. That's two and a half times a second, and they actually have a big bonus to light, which... I want to say takes it to eight, 16 damage. I can't remember the exact numbers because they changed it a few times. Maybe someone in chat can call that out. I think it's six, I think it's about double damage versus light um, units, the anti-ground attack. The anti-air attack, I don't think has any bonuses. It's 18 damage. I think they're the same, and it's slightly longer range as well. Like Wraiths, but good. I mean, a Wraith has an almost meaningless anti-ground attack, so... <laughs> Like a Wraith versus Air, and like an actual unit that's good versus ground. Versus ground. Oh, Meat Farm getting targeted. No shield should be available for a while. Mana's just trying to hang on. And Mana's shown if he can get to the later stages, he, he does make pretty good armies. He's got a Ritual Chamber. He does have a Doombringer. I mean, it's basically just Mass Hornet versus Mass Gaunt. And it's like, how does this trade? I think Probe just has to be very careful to save his shield for the big fight. Notice as well, guys, when he returns to Hangar, he has always one bob in the repair matic so it can heal up very quickly. But he's actually going to be surprised by this push, I think. Uh-oh. Does he see him? I think he sees him. Oh, he's going to go for a fight. you got to be careful. Don't, don't waste your shield. You can't be wasting your shield before the fight starts. He's only got one Vulcan. That Vulcan needs to get out of here. Get that Vulcan out of there, bro! Bro, the Vulcan! Is that, he thinks he's on Arnold Schwarzenegger. What was that really bad movie he was in? Commando, where he just gets a minigun and thinks he can kill everything? Okay, the, the Gaunts... Oh! Oh! Oh my god, the Gaunts are actually doing alright. The Gaunts are doing alright. The shield on the Vulcan does pretty well, though. A lot of Hornets just went down. A lot of them have gone back and are healing, but there's only about five that survived. That one Vulcan over here, he's killing quite a few Gaunts, but I don't know if he's killing enough. We've also got the Rampart there that did a massive buff on the uh, Sentry Post. But that only lasts for a few seconds. I think he might have used that a little bit too early. And dude, mana. Looks like he might just barely be able to break him. Now keep in mind, hornets do not automatically attack anti-air units. So one of the big problems Probe ran into in that fight is his hornets are brain damaged. In StarCraft, units will always fight units that can attack them as a higher priority. But in this case, in Stormgate, that's either not meant to be in the game or it's not instituted yet. So basically, the Hornets were attacking random brutes when they should have been killing the fragile backline of Gaunts that's actually a threat to them. Even now, they're still not targeting these Gaunts unless you target fire. And that's costing Probe a lot because he could have killed all these Gaunts by now. I mean, those Gaunts could have been dead and then the brutes don't, don't shoot up. But unfortunately, the Hornets are not working for him. And without any Vulcans left, he loses almost all of his bobs on his third. Mana with a really nice timing. Just beautiful mixture of units and having such a big critical mass of Gaunts that the Hornets, even though they're technically efficient over time, they did not have enough firepower to defend that push. Pro probably could have microed it a little bit better and target fired those Gaunts slightly better. But Mana hit him with such a fierce timing. It's easy to easy to backseat and say he should have done this. He should have, would have. But, uh... Much harder to actually execute under pressure. You can see whenever it gets to a small fight like this, it's kind of the, the Hornets start killing the Gaunts really quickly, but it takes so much focus fire because these Brutes are so tanky. Imps coming in to try and tickle these units down as well. I feel like he should be focusing down those red hit point Gaunts. Mana has a fourth base probe. Actually took a fourth on the left, so he's not dead, even though his third lost a ton of bobs at it. Vulcans are so good against Gaunts once you get a few of them up with medtech healing because they do splash damage in a cone. But the way it worked in that fight is he only had like one Vulcan and there was an arc of Gaunt, so they weren't taking any splash damage. Oh, Probe's trying to take the middle base. That is beyond greedy right now. If Mana doesn't realize it, it could pay off big. But for now, he's first of all just got to get this base back up and he has to get his, uh, his, his Vulcan count out. He's trying to build a bunch of sentry posts in the middle. 
A very brave maneuver, but what what is the transition? Mass Iron Vault coming down. So I guess a lot of Magmadons will be joining at some point, potentially, but Magmadons don't really kill Vulcans very quickly. Maybe Weavers will come in, but those come out of the Conclave. Hornets intercepting the rally. That's what you're meant to do with Hornets. Look at how quick they shred that rally of Gaunts, and then they can come in from behind where they'll naturally be fighting the Gaunts more. Beautiful play. Beautiful play. Oh me, oh my. Beautiful play for Probe if he can get it to work, but Mana has the momentum. He's got the scary army, but he doesn't want to overcommit. A few units got picked off on the way across the map, and Mana, he's still looking around here. Did he see that Bob go to the center? I don't think he did, which is lucky for Probe. Four base Mana against a five base Probe, and this is a double double base. Double Therium, double Luminite. It is a super ridiculous base on Secluded Grove if you can defend it. Couple sentry posts back here. He's gonna get jumped on though. He's gotta watch out, man. He's gonna just stand and fight. He activates the shield, but scaring the shield out of probe is actually so effective. The Doombringer goes down. The Doombringer goes down. Massive kill there for probe. And he's doing some good Hornet Micro. I would argue he's maybe being a little bit scared on his Hornet Micro, pulling the back almost too early, but better too early than too late. And look, Lancers. Oh, Lancers are so good against the Gaunts. That's what's been missing this whole time. Look at how much damage they do. Most of the Gaunts do slip away, but you can see how having some Lancers there, that really just is absolutely brilliant. Because your opponent's so heavy on Gaunts, as I said, without Shadow Flyers, the Gaunts are not a great damage unit. They're very fragile, and things can get quite rough. He brings in a new Doombringer. I don't know if he's really putting much inside that. He put something in there. Oh, he's doing an Imp Gaunt drop. Okay, he's going to do another Imp Gaunt drop. Fair enough. That middle base being secured for Probe might actually be the, uh, the clincher, though. As remember, this is the very last life of Vanguard. Probe's second life, the last life. He has to win the next this game in the next three in a row to win this series, with the prospect of beating Parting twice in there as well, which is kind of funny. Uh, using the Effigy, not a bad... Is it Effigy? It's Effigy, right? I'm pretty sure it's Effigy. Um, words like that, like, I've read this before. I don't think I've said this out loud too much. Oh, down in the park on the weekend, burning a bit of an effigy, you know, hanging out. Not not the most casual conversation word. Ooh. And we all know it's a gif, not a jif, right? What the the creator said it's jif. Oh, big imp blow up. Oh, he takes out three bobs, not too bad. Eh, not that successful though, is it? And he's going to teleport out. I'm surprised the Hornets didn't kill that. But I guess because they were returning to Hangar, they have to wait till they're healed up before they do it. Um, these guys are all healing up, but they're healing up very slowly because they're on the wrong side of the Hangar. So they're not in range of the repair matic which is why they're taking a little bit longer to return to action. As he gets a Vulcan Mass, that's going to be very good. We should see Medtex coming in soon as well. Yeah, first Medtex hitting the field. Because if you can get Medtex with Nano Swarm, chuck that on the Vulcans, it is insane. It is such a big power spike. And I don't know how Mana's possibly going to deal with that. The creator's wrong. It's definitely GIF. GIF is a brand of peanut butter. I've heard that. So GIF in Australia with the J, that's a brand of cleaning product. It's like a very, very strong cleaning product you use for like tiles and toilets and stuff. <laughs> so it's it sounds even more ridiculous than for you guys. It sounds like peanut butter. For us, it sounds like it's, it's bloody something you use to clean a toilet. Flayed Dragon is now out. I think Mana, though, his army is so basic. It's Remember I said he has a basic bitch army in that previous game? Well, this one truly is basic bitch. It's almost pure Gaunt, a couple Brutes, one Flayed Dragon. No Hellborn, no Mags. I mean, he, he doesn't have Shadow Flyers to deal with the Hornets. And Oh my god! Oh my lord! Oh my lord, he just lost so many Imps. Oh, that's brutal. But wait, wait, wait. You don't want to lose the Hornets, bro. If, if you don't move, if tack for a few seconds, you do get a big movement speed boost. He loses two Hornets, maybe three, maybe four. About three or four Hornets do go down. You can see a few of them dying from Infest, leaving Fiends behind. But I think killing so many Imps, not a terrible trade for Probe, especially since he's so far ahead on the income. I'd love to see him do that move, but strike this base here and uh, just be a bit quicker to retreat next time rather than getting caught. GIF, as a British person, GIF sounds like a slang word for female privates? Really? Oh, wow. I like that you guys say twat. Twat's a funny word to me. I'm just saying. That's a good British one. Anyways. Um, Lance is going down the left side. Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
probe catches the gaunts in the open. Oh, luckily the lancers weren't buffed, so they can't catch those gaunts. They speed boost. Imps. Oh my god, these imps are going to get... No, the imps move past. Mana with the miss micro because he got jumped. His flayed dragon got jumped on, on the right side. That's what he was looking at. He didn't micro the imps, so they ran past the lancers. Oh no. His imps are all detonating in random spots. Probe's avoiding them. Both players playing cross server, and of course, Probe has the momentum. So Mana making a few misplays at the end, but he was already pretty deep in the coffin, and Probe gets a second point on the board for Team Vanguard. All right, guys, it's the last life, and they're going up against the big dog, Pardon in the bottom left. Going for his standard Conclave opening. Probe is the last man standing. He has to beat Parting twice, and Mana, or... Um, Wait, who am I forgetting? Or Theory. Which, whichever one of those comes out a second time. Now, obviously, for now, just beating Parting once, I think, would be a very big moral victory for Team Vanguard and for Probe. But even beating Parting once is hard, because Parting 3 0 Probe in the big $10,000 EGC tournament last weekend, and uh, he, 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 he looked dominant all the way through to the finals. Parting looked like a beast. I actually, I mean, dude, Parting's build order in the game two of the finals against Vortex was just legendary. Stay tuned for my cast on that. I'm going to be casting that probably tomorrow and chucking that up on YouTube because that was just such a... I was blown away. I was like, what a genius. Like, Parting has some real good twists on the build orders. He plays a very strong style. Now, notice that Probe is doing an uncharacteristic build for Probe. He's going for an early Lancer pressure. I think this is looking to counter the fact that Parting very regularly will move out with just two gaunts and start going for the speed camp on the right without checking if his opponent's being aggressive or not. He just plays very risky double conclave almost all the time. Now, he's going multiple lances. Is this going to be dogs behind this or is he just going to expand? Probe is known for fast expanding. So I do expect Parting to try to take advantage by moving out to creep probably about 2 minutes 45, maybe, maybe, maybe 2.30 even. Um, he's got an Iron Vault, so he is going for the third production facility. Players have realized you need an Iron Vault to stay safe against the upgraded two racks Lancer timings. And Probe, even though he's built a few Lancers, he's actually now going for the Expand. And I think he's going to be a little unhappy because we're getting to 2 minutes 30. Parting's showing no sign of moving out. Notice how Parting has optimized, so he has three workers on the far sides and only two workers on the middle. You need to do some finicky swapping imps on and off in order to get it to mine like that. But uh, we'll see what he can get going. Dog moving around up there. Four Gaunts moving out. Lance is waiting for the ambush. Let's see if he falls for it. Two minutes 50. Probe is trying to creep jack him. He wants him to aggro the goats. And then he wants to jump on top, kill the Gaunts. And hopefully steal the goats. Is it going to work? Oh, perfect timing for Probe. Comes in from behind. Goats in the front. It's a sandwich. The creeps and the Vanguard working together. Who knew? This is how you make Vanguard overpowered. You recruit some angry goats. The goats, though, fighting the, the, the bloody guy there. And because the units were already infested, they still do spawn fiends on death. But two gaunts have gone down. Gaunts and lancers have very similar movement speed, but a third fiend... Uh, gaunt, sorry, does go down as well. Dog trying to escape to that left side. Has the exact same movement speed as those uh, fiends. So they will chase it and eventually catch it if it doesn't get some healing immediately upon getting home. But they do change targets right there. Extra Gaunt on the high ground is going to go down as well. It's a bad start for Parting so far. Good start for Probe. He's stopped him from taking the creep camp. But I guess Lancers can't move through there. Oh, do we have a game crash? Or no, it looks like it just hung for a second there. Sorry, guys. Don't know what was happening. Fiend harassing in the main base, being a bit of a nuisance. Looks like that Gaunt did indeed escape in the bottom. Lancers. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, Probe over commits there. Takes a few big brute hits. He's going to have to back away from that. Lancers are a little bit faster than Gaunt's chat saying. They're saying they're quite a bit faster. I thought they were only, like, slightly faster. I thought it was, like... 5% or something like that. I thought it was like barely faster. Obviously, once the upgrade kicks in, they're way faster, but I, I guess I just haven't seen enough interactions of unupgraded Lancers chasing Gaunts down. Apparently, Brute Gaunt is 4, Lancer is 4.5. Oh, that's a bigger difference than I thought it was. Yeah, it's a bit of a bigger difference. 
So they will eventually catch them. Nice drop coming in already. And Probe, he's having to defend with sentry posts. He's also going for bio here. He's going to go for exos after his lances. Parting has already got the gaunt drop here, despite being creepjacked at the start of the game. Still with a pre-five minute drop, keeping him pinned. Okay, Gaunts and Brute's going to go after these bobs. Forces the pickup, and then the, the, the overcharge, sorry, and then just picks up and gets out of there. Lance is going to try and take out the rocket deer on the left side. Does let that guy tank before going back in. He desperately needs that healing. Probe looking for a big mass Lancer timing, I would imagine. Iron Vaults, as well as the Shadow Cleft, or Ritual Chamber, in fact, going down behind this. So Parting wants to go for early Flame on Imps, and that's part of why he's going for the third base. His third base plus Ritual Chamber is kind of awesome. What a lot of people don't realize is you'd think rushing a third or fourth is sometimes risky, but if you rush Ritual Chamber, you get the upgrade to allow your Imps to detonate, to Flame on, and guess what? Suddenly it's not risky because you can use your workers as really good defensive units. So there's this, this kind of unholy synergy, which absolutely fits the infernal sort of law of, oh, 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 I want to be greedy, but guess what? I can just detonate and sacrifice my own dudes, get wrecked. Am I greedy or am I aggressive? Because the thing is, he can also turn those imps into those very powerful flame on drops where he drops two gaunts, six imps, blows up a ton of bobs, turns them all into fiends and just gets out of control. Look at this micro from Parting. Give Parting an inch, he'll take a mile when it comes to the micro wars. Already damaging a bunch of those. Those bobs going to repair each other up. Good choice. Lance is coming in from the left side, but he doesn't have the upgrade yet. What the hell? Or at least I don't see the animation for the upgrade, even though they seem to be moving quite fast. Uh, oh my god, did he forget the upgrade, guys? Or am I? Or is it just the graphic isn't showing? The, because there's no blue on them. Normally you can see the blue... Ooh, that is a big problem. Being on Mass Lancer with no upgrade is really bad. Probe with some good micro, though. Does pull back to the choke point, starts isolating those Brutes pretty well. Doesn't really care too much about the Gaunt damage, but if the Brutes are allowed to stand and fight, your Lancers will start dropping. And he's trying to pull back right now to heal up. Those Lancers trying to kite on this left side. Takes out another Brute, but the Lancers are starting to drop at the same time, dropping the main base once again. Does force an overcharge, takes out a single Bob, and Probe trying to micro in two places at once. I mean, uh, trying to do an amazing play, but he overcommits and he gets caught out and he loses almost all of his lances on the left side. Parting is a next level competitor at this game. His third's full. His fourth is about to start. Parting still has his drop alive in the top right, keeping the exos pinned at home. They call him the big boy in StarCraft. They call him the twister of Ds. You guys can fill in the blanks with that one. He has a lot of nicknames. Um, his famous build order that he won a world championship off, or at least part of his success that year, even if it wasn't important in the finals because it was a different matchup, was the 1-1-1 one, one, the one, one, one build, the 1-1-1 one, one, one build, because it uh, he won a lot of Korean 1 with it. The, the man's a psychopath. He's very good at games, and he's known for being almost belligerently aggressively aggressive, but his micro makes it almost always a good decision. You can see he used the recall ability on the Doombringer, pulled it home, and uh, is now sending it across the map again. I would imagine there's six imps and two uh, gaunts inside there, ready to infest and explode some of the enemy bobs. Forgetting the Lancer upgrade is death, says chat. Yeah, it pretty much is, and uh, it does seem like Probe is in a very bad spot. Now, he's also been forced to build so many sentry posts, similar to what he did in the last game to Mana, where Mana had to build shroud stones everywhere. Building a lot of static defense never feels good. Ooh, okay. Actually, it's didn't see any flame on there. Forces the overcharge, though. The double sentry post keeping him back for now. Bit of a fight in the middle of the map. The Lance says, I don't know if the replays... Yeah, they still don't seem to have that blue graphic on them, so I'm feeling like they don't have the um, kinetic redirection, guys. It is maximum 10 charges, by the way. Oh, imps, flame it on, flame it on, flame it on! Does take out the sentry post. Doesn't take out too many imps, though. And the Doombringer itself got shot down, so that's actually really effective. That's kind of crazy, man. That's that's actually a really good defense by Probe. If he could get like some amazing ambush off or something as well, I would truly believe. The problem I'm feeling right now for him is that there's a fifth base on the way and these fiends are still being a nuisance. He's got to just kill that last fiend. Nicely done. Down in the bottom right, Infernal is going for a shrine and uh, another uh, shroud stone over there. And it's a Hellborn transition, yeah. 
Getting Hellborn as your ranged artillery to finish off the game is a great way to play. They're slightly tankier than a brute, but more importantly, they have 14 range of 50 damage with an AoE cone behind the target that they first hit. Not a single veteran unit in this game tells you it's not going well for Probe, and he's on mass barracks right now as he tries to survive. Isn't kinetic redirection bugged where it only shows up once you've upgraded it? I'm not quite sure, guys. Still no upgrade from what we can see. I've never seen it bug out and not display before in a replay, so I do think Probe simply forgot that upgrade. Habitat goes down. This drop's slaying right now. He's going to try to run in on this right side as Probe for a counterattack. He's kind of desperate, but the Shroud Stone's everywhere. Easily cleaning up a few units. He does take out a Lancer, but a Hellborn shot sends him away. A few Exos come out, but you know what? The Gaunts could even potentially take on those Exos since they outnumber them so bad. Good micro, though. I like the stutter step. Remember, Gaunts only have 5.5 range, whereas Exos have 7 with their BR-15 rifle. BR for big rifle? Oh, guys. Guys, I've, I'm only looking at the attack names in this show match for the first time, and I've just realized, are we serious? <laughs> it isn't. Is it? <laughs> What are these sharp uh, SC sharp claws? Like, uh, uh, come on, man, come on, come on! Like it's battle rifle pig. That does sound a little better than big rifle, but I don't know. I'm sticking with big rifle. Sounds funnier. Expansion in the top left, trying to go up for probe. Down in the bottom right, we do have a fight on the creepy creep jacks. A small army of partings. Parting force to split and try to run away using his uh, speed boost as well for the gaunts. He's got to get out of here. In the top left, though. Bobs on this base, all getting taken out. Oh, even if he finishes the base, he loses a lot of bobs to do so. And the Hellborn now cascading into the middle of the map, starting to coalesce all of the blue forces coming together. The red forces are simply a trickle at this point. And how does a trickle stop a flood? I don't know. He's going to need to make some magic happen. The med tech there with its such an impressive attack does chase those gaunts away as they move down. Flat cannon with its superior range, does pretty well. The bouncers, though, going to take out a few of those bobs. Very nicely done. Finally, the Exos clean it up. How do you get on top of this army, though? Normally, with a bio army, it's about having overwhelming numbers coming in from two or three sides surrounding it and getting on top of the Hellborn with a bit of an Exo flank. Problem is, there's less Exos than there are Hellborns and Brutes. Oh, man. One Hellborn does go down, but look at those Hellborn shots. The splashies are massive. And it's cool that he got a Hellborn, but you got to be very careful as Probe right now because you are outnumbered. He's going to get infested. Oh, a good section of his units do get hit by that infest AoE. And he's getting jumped on right now. Parting trying to chase him down. Not able to, but that's okay. Parting can always take up station over on the left side, start sieging his bases. Probe is forced to try to cut off the reinforcement and come in from behind. It's a good idea. You don't want to just fight front on. You want to try and use your positioning to your advantage. He does use the Rampart very well for that bonus. That basically makes the Buzzsaw Cannon triple hit points. I love the way Probe has used his shield, his Rampart shield. He's using so many of these abilities so bloody well in these games, but he's a bit too far behind, I think, for it to matter in this game. We're going to see if he can make some magic happen against El Parting. Parting looking fantastic. Hellborn sieging him. He says, okay, you're going to base trade. I'll push in. Rampart uses its ability again since it had so much energy stacked up. That Buzzsaw Cannon does tank a lot of damage. Flank comes in from the left side. The Hellborn, the Brutes, the Gaunts trying to reposition. If the Hellborn hit those Exos in a clump, those Exos will drop like flies. You can see Probe quickly micros away, but two Medtechs do get stuck in the corner and caught out. He's trying to pull south. He's trapped in between the Rally and the Reinforce. It's a massive army coming back from both sides. The Exos starting to drop like flies. Even the Spider's getting in on it. The Lancer randomly fights the Spider. The Spider says, Oi, dickhead thought you were Australian. Why are you fighting me? And Probe has to tap out. GG, well played. Parting comes in as the finishing blow. I am glad that Team Infernal saved Parting for last because he is such a beast, such an unstoppable player right now that it is uh, definitely something where I wonder if anyone could have even taken a map off him if he came out first. I think, I think they would have taken a map or two, but as it is, that is just incredibly powerful. Honestly, shout out to Mana for being the just clutch player, made an amazing comeback, and did multiple sick Magmadon drops, as well as the lovely double catapult push first probe. So shout out to Mana for making some amazing plays and everyone else for playing today.